If you're a parent, particularly a parent of faith, who has recently had your world rocked by the news that your child is gay, bisexual, transgender, or any part of the LGBTQ plus community, and you maybe don't know how to handle this news or know what to do next, well, our next guests are here to speak directly to you and possibly offer up some advice because they were in the exact same situation several years ago, and according to them, they didn't handle the news very well and are wanting to help other parents avoid making the same mistakes that they made. Greg and Lane McDonald are the founders of one of the first Christian ministries for parents of LGBTQ plus children and are authors of the book and study guide called Embracing the Journey, a Christian Parent's Blueprint to Loving Your LGBTQ Child. They now speak at churches and conferences around the U.S. They join me now from their home in Atlanta, Georgia. Greg and Len, welcome to the show. It's such an honor to have both of you on today. No, you're kind. Yes, thank you so much, Jeanette. We're, we feel privileged to be here. Absolutely. Oh, awesome, thank you. Okay, so I know that you've helped thousands of families at this point, so thank you for doing what you're doing, first of all. Now, in your own words, you were strong, conservative, evangelical Christians, and still are, I might add. So. You were leaders in your church, so in your background, you had never interacted with members of the LGBTQ plus community until you found yourself, I guess, thrust right into it. So why don't you just walk us through your story? Sure. Yeah, yeah. We go. I'll go. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so for us, um, you know, we, we met Jesus later in life. Uh, I was 27, Lynn was 25. And we had um, a, a really significant experience um, in, in meeting him. And, and so we ended up in a, in a very conservative church in West Michigan. And, um, and you know, the sound bites that we heard um, were that if, if people were gay, um, well, first of all, it's a choice. And, um, uh, and, uh, and, and normally mom and dad have something to do with it, right? Dad's been absentee, mom's overbearing, what have you. So when we learned that our son, Greg Jr. was gay, he was 17 years old when we found him out. We actually um, uh, suspected he was gay as early as three. We saw counsel for it. Um, mm -hmm. It just, just behaves differently. Counseling. Yep. And, uh, but the counselors told us that he'd be fine. He has loving, caring Christian parents, heterosexual parents, and eventually peer pressure will straighten, his, will straighten him out. Well, that did not happen. And so when we found out that Greg was gay, as you had said earlier, uh, Jeanette, um, we didn't handle it well. Uh, I became, you know, well, first I was a mess. I, I just curled up into the fetal position and just cried and cried and cried. And we had conversations with Greg Jr. about that. And I'm sorry to say that I really weaponized the Bible mm -hmm. and debated it with him. I became a Bible preaching mama which actually did nothing for our relationship yeah. and also nothing for his relationship with Jesus. And he, you know, um, and we were concerned about that. And so we had lost inf influence in yeah, his and, life. Yeah, know? and if I could pick up just a little sure. bit. So yeah. when we confronted Greg, um, words like, um, we'll always love you, Greg, but we need to get you fixed. Like those words left my lips. And of course, you know, once once you, you know, once those words get out, you can't reel them back in. And um, so the message that we communicated to Greg was that he was damaged goods and we were going to fix him. And um, uh, we even thought about conversion therapy for a bit. And we met with uh, a man who worked with um, an organization. Not sure if it was, it was actually the same. okay at the time. And um we just, you know, in our spirit, we just didn't feel that was right because yeah. it, 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 and we're so happy we didn't do that, especially now what we know about um, the, I guess it's the conversion therapy. Yeah, conversion therapy. Yes. And then it's, I mean, even its founder, Alan Chambers, um, he said, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, the people he worked with did not change. And he found it harming and hurtful. So he. But there's a tremendous amount of self harm and suicide that uh, that accompanies that. Right. So when Lynn said that we lost influence, um, it became apparent as Greg went off to college. He went to uh, college uh, in Chicago. We were living in Michigan. Um, it was clear that um, 
Well, we didn't have a relationship, right? I mean, he'd answer the phone or he'd send a text, but there was really uh, no relationship. <clears throat> and so we found ourselves with the very son that I would throw myself in front of a bus for. And we had no influence in his life. And that's a horrible place to be as a parent. And um, we were we were fortunate. Um, we, um, we, we did a little, a little study where we spent some time in the Gospels. We looked specifically at the red letters and uh, we looked at Jesus and we just his teachings. And we really asked ourselves four questions. One was, well, who did Jesus say he was? Because that's pretty telling. Um, who did he hang out with? That's also pretty revealing. Um, how did he treat people? And what is it that he had to say? Um, and what we discovered was that though we thought we were good Christians, I mean, like went to church every Sunday, sometimes twice on Sunday, sometimes Wednesday evening, our kids did Awana, we sent our kids to Young Life. Um, we really thought we were good Christians. But the reality is um, we were not doing a good job of imitating Jesus. In fact, if Jesus were north, we were south. Yeah, totally. Um, in one of your chapters early in the book, Lynn, I I've read the book, I loved it, but you talk about that moment when you go from not knowing to knowing and how many of the parents that you meet say that in an instant, my child, the person I'd known my whole life seemed like a stranger to me. Yes, yes. And, you know, um, what's really sad about that is that I missed so much of his life because he, as a young boy, he was being teased on the bus. They were calling him gay and uh, he didn't even know what that meant. Mm -hmm. And he didn't ask us because he knew we weren't safe. We weren't safe to talk about those kinds of things. And it's just by what we, you know, watched on TV, we would, there'd be Will and Grace at the time and we'd say, turn that off, you know, yeah. and I'm watching that in this house. Yeah. And right. so it had to be confusing to him as he continued to grow up. And I, I just sobbed when I found out and he told us this, that, um, he didn't want to be that he had prayed this would not happen um, even as a little boy mm. and, <clears throat> and then, you know, when it was a reality, uh, he didn't, he didn't have a safe spot to come with us. So we ended yeah. up, um, I just told him, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry. I, we weren't there for you. We should have, I wish we, if we could do it over, we would do it over dif differently. Right. I'm, I'm sure. And I'm sure that there's parents or family members out there who might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? You just love your kid no matter what. But I think as a parent of faith, hearing your child is gay or trans or queer or whatever can be spiritually challenging. So did you find this to be the case? Did you sort of find yourself questioning how can you love God and your child simultaneously? Absolutely. 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 The, the parents we work with, <clears throat> we work with um, a lot of super conservative parents. Well, frankly, because we understand their journey, right? Mm -hmm. And it's our kids who are, uh, have the greatest risk for self-harm and suicide. So um, like, for instance, Greg Jr., because he's gay, has a three times greater incident for self-harm and suicide than his straight peers. And um, so what, when, when, um, when our kids come out of the closet, most of us Christian parents go in the closet, <clears throat> right? Uh, there's a time of damage control. There's a time, oh my gosh, what just happened? Mm -hmm. there's and a that's time understandable. Of, yeah. You know? There's a time of, uh, what about us? What about our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations for our child? Uh, we want to be grand, right? All that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we encounter that regularly. And um, uh, Christian parents, as a rule, and the more conservative we are, the tougher it is for us to deal with that. And as a Christian mom, you know, there was that aha moment. And the aha moment was reading scripture, where Jesus is asked what the greatest commandment mm -hmm. is. And, um, and when when the Pharisees are asking him this and, and Jesus says, and actually, you know, what was interesting about that? I mean, I heard this later, um, someone talking about that scripture and it was, you know, Jesus normally answered questions with a question, but he didn't for this one. He had an answer. And he said to love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself, all the laws and prophets stem from those two things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's no loopholes, it, no exceptions. Immediately I thought if I'm supposed to love my neighbor, I know I'm supposed to love my enemies too. 
in right. later in scripture, how much more my son or daughter who um, happens to feel same-sex attraction? Mm -hmm. Of course, the one thing I would love to tell parents is, yes, do not be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. God wants you to do both, and you can do both. And not only can you do it, it's a command. When we started talking with Greg's friends, and today we possibly know 100 or more Christian LGBTQ men and women, right? People who are crazy about Jesus, but didn't want to be gay, didn't want to be trans. And the story Lynn just told, we hear that frequently. And so when you, the more you hear, the more I hear people telling me that I didn't want to be gay, right? <clears throat> Um, it becomes apparent to me that these are not necessarily straight people with a sin problem, right? Um, when they say they didn't want to be gay, it's like, I didn't sign up to be heterosexual, right? It's like, and that's kind of many times their story. So understanding where they come from, understanding their story, 100%. really helps parents know how to communicate with them. Yeah. Is that sort of how you came to that place where you realize this isn't a choice he's making? This is just him, who he is? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. He didn't sign up for it any more than no. We did. So, what led you to finally write this book and then subsequently start this incredible ministry? I know you've counseled hundreds, I dare say now thousands of struggling parents over the years, and I'm sure it's had a profound impact on relationships with parents and their kids. Once you yeah. talk about the book, I'll talk about the ministry. Okay, no <laughs> problem. Um, the book, God placed it on my heart. Um, Oh, wow. Way before it was even thought about writing. And I kept on saying, well, no, God, I'm not a writer. I can't do this. <laughs> and the burden just wouldn't go away. And so when, when we finally did do the Embracing the Book, we wanted, um, we wanted a helpful book that parents could relate to. Um, that might be similar in their journey, maybe not everything in our story, but we have a lot of, of, of very evangelical conservative Christians will go, that's my story. That's, I see me in that. Yeah. And so um, by doing that, it, 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 it was, it, I was like, oh, okay, now we're done. We did our book, no more. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> 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 and we were talking to our pastor about it, and he said, oh, no. He said, you're just getting going. And we I had no clue, but I had this restlessness in my heart, and I told him that. And he said, okay, God's going to do yeah. something else. And that's where the ministry came in. Yeah, yeah and just quickly. Um, so nine years ago, our pastor was finishing up a sermon series, um, and he asked the question, what breaks your heart? And our small group was following the same series. And we all kind of looked at each other, and some some parents knew exactly what it was. Oftentimes, what broke mom's heart was different than dad's. And but what what happened with Lynn and I, we both looked at each other and we said, "Oh, it's the LGBTQ community." And what we meant by that was that by this point in our life, we possibly at least ten years had passed since we've been walking with Greg, and uh, and so our phone would ring a lot. Um, people saying, "Hey, would you talk to my neighbor? My sister just found out, you know, etc." And um, uh, and we were just so hurt by watching families being torn apart in the name of God, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I'm sorry, this is, it's not my God. Mm -hmm. And um, so we decided to uh, form Embrace in the Journey. Um, we're peacemakers. We're bridge builders. We build bridges between um, LGBTQ individuals, their families, and the church, uh, even it's when they seem at odds. It's incredible. You know what? We are running out of time here, Greg and Lynn, but I love hearing your story. There's so much to tell with your story, with the book, with the ministry. I think people need to really check it out. But thank you so much for coming on today and sharing this very personal side of your life. Oh, it's our pleasure. Our, anytime. Yes, anytime. And if I could just say one more thing to the parents, the conservative parents don't do it alone. Oh yeah, geez. you know, really get involved in a community with other parents who have LGBTQ kids because it is confusing. It is to work through. Thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate you. Our pleasure. Greg and Lynn McDonald are the authors of Embracing the Journey: A Christian Parent's Blueprint to Loving Your LGBTQ Child, and the founders of the ministry with the same name, Embracing the Journey. I'm Jeanette Roche on behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News. Thanks so much for watching.